Men join the reapers, all the kingdom seekers laying down their lives to find it in the end. Come and join the heart. Hi guys, uh, this is um, Lydia, Hannah, and Shara. Um, we just want to do this clip to honor our mother, um, Amy Spotswood, just how much she uh, influenced our lives, you know, even in her heart for Africa, her heart for children, her heart for um, discipleship. Um, just, she used to talk about Africa all the time, I remember, and we would actually tell her to stop talking about it because, you know, the instant we complain about our food or something like that, she would she would say, well, there's children in Africa that, you know, are starving that would love to have this food. She would never allow us to even complain because she had seen the poverty that is over there. And I'm so grateful for um, the heart that she had, you know, for the gospel and sharing the gospel and the children and everything like that. So we just want to honor her. And she's actually probably the one of the first ones that actually sparked my interest for Africa, whether I knew it or not. In 1987, Amy Arrington, age 22, accompanied Esther Aiken on Amy's first mission trip to Liberia, West Africa with Source of Light Missions, based in Madison, Georgia. The following year, Amy returned to Liberia along with three other students from Toccoa Falls Bible College. We recently discovered this old VHS video footage of that trip. And join the reapers, all the kingdom seekers, laying down their lives to find it in the end. Come and join the harvest, help to light the darkness, for the Lord is calling faithful man. Hi, I'm Amy Arrington. Many of you know me. I'm very excited to be able to show you this video of my um, trip to Liberia, West Africa last summer. I'm very excited because I know many of you were deeply involved with this trip in your prayers and financial support and I just appreciate it so much. And I think you'll be able to see some of the fruit that that brought forth. First, I'd like to show you where Liberia is. It's in West Africa, right here in the western part, that little country right there. Again, when this lady, Esther Aiken, was a missionary in Liberia for Source of Light, and she realized that there was a need for Bible teachers in Liberia, West Africa. She realized this through a young kid who begged her to come and teach Bible at her school. So she came home and she began to pray that the Lord would send someone back over her with her or several people back over with her to teach Bible in their schools and even in their public schools and so that these young people could hear the Word of God. So she did that very thing. And then the next summer, summer of eight, um, excuse me, fall of 87, I went over there and taught Bible in public and private schools in Liberia, West Africa. And it was a real blessing to see these young people be able to have the Word of God. Then, when I came back, the Lord brought together a team from my college to go over there and do the very same thing again. Well, with more people, we were able to reach many more students in the schools there in Liberia and go to many more schools. Bud right here, Bud Cox, that's myself, Lindy Chain, and Christy Cordes. First on the videotape we're going to begin with where we lived and then um, we're going to leave there to go to the school and then we're going to introduce you to the students by having them in the first beginning of the tape sing for you. The way they sing, in their way they speak English, you may not understand it, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview of what they're singing. The first song will be, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. 
Except they sing it a little differently. They sing, Jesus is a sweet name, I know, I know. So just in case you hear that, you'll know what it is. And the second one is no harm. Now this is one that they taught us. It goes, no harm, no harm, no harm, no harm, no harm, no harm. No, the devil can't do me no harm, and I'm going to stand right. This, is our, this was our home when we were in Liberia. Upstairs were our bedrooms. leaving in a car to go. That was Richard, our good friend who was driving. Notice how the students just take this song away from me. This is Esther teaching in one of our village, in a village school that we went to. We used child evangelism materials. We were able to reach um, almost 3,000 students.
our good shepherd. And we need to cry out to him, Jesus, Jesus, please forgive me of the bad things that I've done. Please forgive me of the sins that I have done. And you know what? It says, the Bible says, that he is faithful and just. If we confess our sins, if we call out to Jesus and confess our sins to him, ask him to forgive us, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. He will forgive us of our sins. And you know what? We don't have to feel like we're caught anymore. We don't have to feel like we're tangled up in our sins. We can be free from our sins. And we don't have to be guilty of our sin anymore. We can be free from it. And we can know that we are forgiven. Christian's names on the 
letter on this piece of paper. And he was to go to the city of Damascus. And he was to go there and, tell, and get Christians so that he could kill them and persecute them and hurt them and beat them. And so he began to travel to Damascus. And he got on a horse with some, he got some friends of his, some men, to go with him to get these Christians so that he could get them and kill them. And they were on the road for about five days. And can someone tell me what happened next? Someone go? Okay. Look up tomorrow and wish. A what? Look up tomorrow. That's right. Well, a bright light came down. It was so bright that it made Saul fall on the ground. He fell on the ground on his knees. Here we're getting to know one of our students. She's practicing an a African game. We did have some time outside of class to be able to practice and uh, play and get to know the kids. Then it's crazy myself to a spin first, then crazy lose a point, then it will be my turn to go. Okay. But if we throw up on the feet, then she will continue going till she reach to the maybe we might say two fifty the winner or one fifty. Huh. Then she'll become a winner. Okay, now show us how it's done. <laughs> you and Christy play. <laughs> Maybe get further away. Can you get further away? Can you get further away? That was Josiah, the baby of the family. the Bibles for saying the ten Bible verses. We were so happy in this one room. There were so many. He's saying that most of the, these students are interested in the Word of God. Some of them who were Muslims have this very day found their um, faith in the Lord Jesus. He's saying they should take it as tools to work, to use day and night, to read their Bible so they can grow. These students are putting on a program for us before we left. One of the hardest things to do was to say goodbye, and they are putting on shows and programs for us at the end to show their appreciation. Here's some boys with a special talent.
was a very happy it was just a bug. We said here, I asked them, uh, someone also out here, this is where we have our devotion every morning. Except it is raining. When it's raining, then they have to come inside. And they have to be having their devotions in their respective classes. But this is where we have our joint devotion. So I am very pleased with the students, and you can see that they are pleased with me. For their appreciation for us teaching. <laughs> Here the students are singing us a song that says, Goodbye visitor, goodbye visitor, we are sorry to leave you now. God will bless you day and night, night and day, day and night. It was hard to leave them the last time they sang us this song. Fast forward 22 years to April 25th, 2010. That is when the Lord Jesus takes Amy's hand and gives her a certificate of completion. Okay. Add another five years and Hannah Spotswood Jensen, Amy's oldest daughter, graduated as Amy did from Tacoa Falls College. So growing up, I was just, um, I was so close to Mama. We were, I mean, she was my best friend. Any time that I had something going on, like in school or uh, with friends, I would I would talk to her about it. And I mean, if you think about the people who influence you most in your life, it's usually the people who who have come closest to you emotionally and who you have poured your heart out to. And so, therefore, Mama was one of the most influential people in my life. Her interests became my interests, um, and not only because she was my mother and she was close to me, but also because the Lord, uh, I, was, I had become close to the Lord, and the Lord has the same desire, the Lord gives us His desires, and so therefore my desires were His desires, and so I got started early in my life at, in CEF, Child Evangelism Fellowship, and I started teaching and um, and things like that, and 
five day clubs and um, I, I got a love for doing that sort of thing. After mama passed away, I was seeking the Lord about what he wanted me to do and I knew that I wanted to do something with people. And so I had heard about Tekoa from mama and and there was multiple other reasons why I had chosen the school to go to. So um, I think that was one of the best decisions that I made in my whole life uh, because Tekoa is just an amazing school and I had some of the biggest transformations happen in my heart and in my mind there. And I was trained to be um, a, a Christian counselor. And um, I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very grateful for the fact that Mama was so influential in that part of my life. Not to mention, I met my husband there. After returning from Africa, Amy worked with Child Evangelism Fellowship, CEF. She had arranged for all of her daughters to teach in CEF summer sessions and good news clubs. This was instrumental in their lives. It turned out that the Lord sent Elizabeth Inyang, a CEF worker from Nigeria, West Africa, to live with us. As a result of the close relationship with Elizabeth, Amy's other daughters, Lydia and Cheryl Spotswood, joined Elizabeth in Nigeria in 2015 and 2016 to reach precious children for the Lord Jesus. At the beginning of this video, this picture <laughs> was at the beginning and we have it actually. <laughs> this is where our mother was in Liberia and we were in Nigeria, which is where, Shara? Right here. <laughs> in Nigeria, right here. And so Liberia? Liberia. And Nigeria. And Nigeria. <laughs> and we went to Mozambique, uh, not Kenya. Mozambique, Kenya. Here. Here. Right where that sparkle is. Yep. For some reason, the sparkle's there. And soon we will be going to Mozambique, right there. <laughs> I too was close to my mom and um, she just inspired me in so many different ways and um, it wasn't, maybe I didn't see it at first, but after she was gone I looked over her life and I was like, that's how I want my life to look like, you know, and she was just an inspiration as a mother, as a, um, as um how she was a wife and how she was a teacher and everything that she was she did it to the best of her ability she did it to glorify God and worship him and um, so she would always talk about Africa when I was young and I remember that I would always like look at this um, thing that she brought back from Africa with her and like wonder how they made it and stuff like that and then she'd start talking about Africa. Sometimes I'd be like, okay, mama, like, you talk enough about Africa. But, um, but yeah, she um, was really inspirational in my life. And um, we were able to meet about a year and a half later. Um, this woman from Nigeria stayed, come and stayed at her house and for, um, for a conference. And then she came back a year later and we got really close to her and um, she became like a sister to us and uh, we eventually went over there to Nigeria and stayed with her and her husband. Um, that was a year after we went to Kenya to Africa for the first time and we stayed there for six weeks and it was so amazing. We fell so in love with Africa, with Nigeria, with the children there, with the people there and um, in, in that time me, both my sister and me, we had this strong desire to start an orphanage in Nigeria. At first we were just kind of like, it was an idea in my mind. And then Lydia, one day she came to me, she's like, you know, I felt like the Lord was speaking to me to start an orphanage here in Nigeria. And I was like, well, that's been on my mind for a while. And it was just kind of like a confirmation. And um, so... We went back again uh, last year in 2016 for four and a half months and we lived there. And um, so we have this vision, um, this heart to bring in the kids that 
are abandoned or orphaned um, by, you know, if their parents have died or if they uh, rejected them. We just have that heart to bring them in and show them that they are not orphans anymore, but that they can cry out to God, um, Abba Father, and call them their daddy, and that the spirit of adoption can come in and deliver them from every orphan spirit, every spirit of fear and of bondage. So we're just believing that God can do what he says he will do. Big. It must be huge, right? The Bible says that he holds the ocean in his hand. In his hand. Isn't that crazy? Have you ever seen an ocean before? Yeah. Have you ever seen how big it is? Yeah. God holds that in his hand. He holds the universe. Say that. God yeah. holds the universe. Holds the universe. In his hand. In his hand. <laughs> I just wanted to share how our heart for Africa developed and how what the spirit of adoption missions is about. Um, it's about children encountering the Father's love, orphan and abandoned children coming into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and knowing who they are, that they're not orphaned, that they're not abandoned. They may be in the natural, but God the Father never does. And so how our heart for Africa started was first through the influence of my mother, who, who had that heart, and you see in the past videos, she went to Africa. And she would talk about Africa, and I, I would, wasn't that interested in, at the time, but... Um, when we had an opportunity to go to Kenya for 10 days, that really sparked our heart for Africa. And all of a sudden, when, when I arrived in Kenya, when me and Shara did in 2014, it's like my heart just, I just knew that was home for me. Africa was going to be a part of my life, and I knew it. Um, and so we actually had met a Nigerian lady before we went to Kenya, and that also had an influence in our lives. Her name was Elizabeth, and she came to have her baby, Joseph. It was a very high-risk pregnancy, so she had to come to the U.S. to have him. So she came, and we got to know her and, and learn about Nigeria. And so one summer, we were asking Jesus where he wanted us to go. We knew he wanted us to go to Africa. Um, we just didn't know where. And so we said, okay, God, we were fasting, praying. God, if you want us to go to Nigeria, get Elizabeth's husband to message us on Facebook and ask us to come. Literally two minutes after we prayed that prayer, I see a message on Facebook. It's from him. He said, I would like you to come to Nigeria this summer. Will you come? And we just thought to ourselves, well, if that's not a confirmation, if that's not God, I don't know what is. We ended up going to Nigeria for six weeks, and that was just an amazing, powerful time. Many, many, many children gave their lives to Jesus, around 600 children. And we were able to reach 1,000-something children for the gospel, went out to different villages. And it was in that time that the Lord really gave me and my sister Shara a desire to start a children's home or an orphanage to see these because we found out that there's over 12 million orphan and abandoned children in Nigeria. That is a lot. In Nigeria alone, there's such a need there for good, solid Christian orphanages and homes and loving families. And so that's what we want to do. We just want to follow the Lord. We want Him to be completely, fully in it. We want Him to take over the ministry because we can do nothing without Him. And we know that He is faithful to complete His word and His promises. When He gives us that desire, He will complete it. All the kingdom seekers laying down their lives to find it.
Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Holy Bible, 1 Corinthians 15, 58.